Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm going to put together a little odds and ends video for you. Uh, I've got some stuff starting to stack up over here. It's actually been quite a while since we've done one of these, and I've got some new tools for the shop that were purchases, new tools, some new items for the shop that were gifts from viewers, etc. And I uh, need to clear off the desk over here so we can get some of this stuff put up and uh, get it out there and give folks credit for uh, sending stuff in. Uh, so let's uh, work through this. Like I said, I got a combination of just some new things, uh, new cool things I want to show you, as well as some nice new gifts that came in. So let's get started. So first thing here, this is actually a purchase and I uh, found these uh, on Facebook. It was in one of the used machinist tools groups or whatever. And it uh, turned out it was actually a viewer that had posted these up for sale. Uh, Jeremy Mock, Jeremy lives up in uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, I ended up buying a set of two different sizes. And what these are, are box parallels. And these things are super handy for setting up work on uh, various uh, types of setups you might have where you need a larger parallel uh, to, to do things. On the mill machine, I think they'll come in very handy over on the metal planer uh, and a couple of different kinds here uh, this one here is just obviously a it's a square they're cast iron hollow on the inside this one here is rectangular it's got a little web on the inside uh, I believe this is what four by four and this one I think is four by six and um, anyway they're just handy to have around the shop and he had some for sale couldn't pass them up. I've actually uh, been kind of on the lookout for some of these. And I think what I'm going to do, they're, they're not in terrible shape, but they are a little bit on the, I mean, you can see they've been used. They got scratches, they got dings. I think I'm gonna take these over to the surface grinder and just freshen up the sides on them. Get them all, make sure they're parallel, make sure they're square, um, et cetera, and get them to the same thicknesses and so forth like that so that I can use them in combination with one another and not worry about whether uh, they're actually sitting flat or square. Normally you would actually use them in this configuration, not standing up on the end. Uh, but anyway, kind of kind of a neat little tool to have. And so next I got a collection of books and other literature that was sent in by Steve Battini out in California. And I got a little interesting collection here. So back here in the back, we got some Audell's books. Uh, I've talked about these Audell's books before. They were kind of uh, uh, trade school type books, self-help. So you could basically order a course through these books and uh, they're actually very good. I've got a bunch of these and there's some in here I don't think I've got. So the, and these are usually in volume. So these down here are the Audell's Engineers and Mechanics Guides, which has a lot of steam information in it, volume two and five. We have the Audell's Carpenters and Builders Guides, guide, uh, volumes one and three. I don't know that I've got a complete set of these. And then we got the uh, Plumbers and Steam Fitters Guide. I don't think I've got any of those. So anyway, these right here are actually are are pretty nice. Iron work. Uh, this is a book here, 1930. All kinds of good stuff. Uh, finding and stopping waste in modern boiler rooms. So uh, let's see what 1928 on that. Uh, the Oxyacetylene Welders Handbook, sixth edition. Craftsman, 1960. Um, steel square and its practical uses. You know, it's amazing what all you can do with a steel carpenter square. <laughs> um, you could teach a whole college course on using one of these. So that's, that's nice. Um, coal, the rock that burns. That'll be interesting to look at. And over here we got a Magazine Rail Classics. This is from 1975. Uh, the mining, mining Journal, this will be interesting to look at. I don't, don't think I've got any mining uh, magazines. This is from 1938. I thought this one was interesting. How to forge weld on a blacksmith's anvil for those who have diligently tried and failed. <laughs> uh, that might even describe me. So <laughs> uh, 1995 on that. Uh, I have actually done some forge welding. Uh, it is challenging. And the timber frame book. Uh, this would be an interesting one. I've act I'm actually very interested in timber framing. I've done a little bit, nothing to the, uh, you know, to building a whole 
structure, but just doing some basic timber framing I've done in the past, and I uh, find it very interesting. So anyway, Steve, thanks for the nice collection. We'll add these uh, to the library, and I will probably be staying up late at night thumbing through and looking at some of these. Uh, so thank you very much, sir. Next, this is kind of cool, little old antique uh, crescent wrench or adjustable wrench. Uh, actually, it's not a crescent wrench because it's not made by crescent. Uh, but this is a antique, pretty cool. He, uh, this was sent in by Sander Van Twisk. Sander said he thought it would go good with my antique planer. Uh, I tend to agree with you. I think it matches it pretty well. Uh, the Kilborn Bishop Company, New Haven, Connecticut, which is in the same town that my metal planer was made. Uh, 10 inch drop forward steel adjustable wrench. Uh, so K and B uh, 22 and a half. So anyway, it's kind of a cool antique tool and uh, still works. Uh, so anyway, we will definitely uh, give that a home and I'm sure that it will look very well being used over on my antique metal planer. Thank you, Sander, for sending that in. So the next item here is super cool in my <laughs> my book, and uh, this was a kind of a surprise. Uh, a friend of mine, actually uh, someone that helped teach the first scraping class that we had here at my shop three years ago, came in and helped Richard King with that. And that's Edgar Wolf from Edgar lives down in uh, Florida and comes up through this area going back and forth on various jobs that he's working. Uh, he stops in from time to time and sees me. Uh, he was actually coming through town uh, the other day and gave me a phone call, said, hey, you around, you at your shop? And I was like, well, no, I'm in town, uh, and I got some meetings going on. He said, well, I'm coming through, I got something I want to give you. And it turned out I was able to break loose for a little while, and I was able to meet him as he came in. And he had this amazing uh, item that uh, he gave me. And you're looking, this is a brand spanking new, still in the box, we opened it up. Uh, made by Bush Precision. Now, Bush was, I guess they still are technically, but they, uh, they made uh, all kinds of precision tools, straight edges, uh, parallels, things like that. They're up in the Milwaukee area. They actually went out of business. Um, they sold out. They had a big sale up there, and that's when he got this was when they went out of business. They were selling off a bunch of stuff at reduced prices. Uh, since then, I think someone has purchased the rights to the Bush name, and they're actually still making a lot of stuff under the Bush name, but the original Bush went out of business. But what we've got here is a 45-degree straight-edge, I guess you would call it a straight-edge, or 45-degree master this is for uh, printing up on a V way like this, just like I have on my metal planer. And uh, he's had this for a couple of years and when he saw my project going on, he says, yeah, Keith needs this. I'm never gonna use it for anything. And uh, he was kind enough to give it to me. So this thing is actually, uh, it's pretty, pretty dang heavy, number one, but it's actually was hand scraped at the factory by Bush. I will check this out at some point in time. I need to clean it up. Uh, it was wrapped up in this oil cloth. It's just, it's just dirty more than anything else. But this thing literally has never even been used. And this is a, uh, for you, you blew this thing up, kind of like you would a straight edge, you drop it down in that 45 degree V, like on my planer, and you can check it for uh, the not only flatness, but also to see, make sure that these sides are uh, 45 to one another. So very, very neat tool and something that we can use on the metal planer restoration. Awesome gift. I have no idea how much something like this would cost brand spanking new. I know Edgar got a good deal on it when he got it, uh, but still, I know he paid something for it. And uh, he was very, very kind to, to bring it down and, uh, and let me have it. And wow, still, <laughs> still in, the, in the box. I mean, this thing's literally never even been used. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. So don't have any idea when it would have been made. Um, but 
don't know if it's been sitting around for many, many years. This is kind of an oddball. I'm sure they don't have a, lot, a big demand for this particular um, type of straight edge. So very cool. And interesting, you can see on here the way this was machined. And I know because I've actually seen the machine that I'm sure did this, but they actually used a metal planer, that bush, to do a lot of their straight edges and stuff. So um, uh, it's interesting that you, you can actually see the planer marks on here. They, they did not mill this stuff. They actually put it on a metal planer uh, in their factory. And you can see those straight planer marks on here uh, that would have been done on a, on a metal planer. And we're going to use this to work on a metal planer. Edgar, you're awesome, dude. Thanks so much. This is, this is one of the coolest things that I've seen in a while. And I will gladly add this thing to my collection. My only complaint, this thing is heavy, but uh, I can deal with it. It's not that heavy. It's not so heavy I can't, can't handle it. So if it would have been a six footer, <laughs> I'd have probably had to add the, the gantry crane to pick it up. Thank you, sir. So next up comes a cool little item from John Cole out in Casper, Wyoming. And uh, I'm just going to read a little bit about this because it uh, pretty much kind of says it all. It says, Mr. Rucker encloses a spill-proof copper oiler and acid brush uh, for your shop. It is heavier uh, than using a metal soup can with the lid removed. The solder job is terrible, but it does not leak. I have lost some of my vision, and the old fingers don't make it any easier. So anyway, this is, uh, you can, you know, put oil in here. Uh, you can see it's a spill proof. Put your oil in there, cutting oil. Drop your acid brush down into it, and it is as good or better. I really like, I like this because, number one, it's handmade with love and care. Number two, it's made out of copper. That's just cool. <laughs> it looks cool. It looks vintage. It just looks like it belongs in my shop. And, uh, and it was made by John and sent in to me. So just cool all the way around. So John, thank you so much. You'll probably see that being used uh, in videos. And you know what? The solder job uh, may not be the prettiest in the world, but if it doesn't leak, you're successful, right? So uh, thank you very much, John. You, I appreciate that more than you know, so I will definitely get that uh, put to use. Up next here, I got some diamond grinding wheels, and these were sent in by Bob Colvin up in uh, Ohio. And uh, I talked with Bob, he, uh, you know, we, we discussed, he had some of these left over from some stuff that he had. He wanted to send me some. You know, I was honest with him, told him that, you know, these really didn't fit my surface grinder. But he wanted to send them along anyway, and yeah, I'm glad he did because I'm going to find a use for these. I'll find something to put them on. These diamond wheels are really, really nice to have around the shop for doing certain things on, and uh, I can definitely find a good use for them. Probably just box them up for right now, but down the road, um, uh, I'm sure that we'll find a good use for them. And... Um, I know these are used for grinding really hard stuff. These can be used for grinding like uh, precision ground flat stones. Uh, uh, anyway, they're, they're just, they're handy to have. They're expensive. These are used ones, but they still got plenty of good life left in them. And uh, we're going to find a good use for them. I'll find something that we can use them on. And Bob, thanks for sending them in. And uh, we're going to we'll put them to use somewhere along the line. As long as we've got grinding stuff going on here, I'll show you these. These were sent in by Jonathan uh, up at Orange uh, Engineering and Machine Works in New Jersey. And uh, Jonathan had contacted me, said, hey, I saw you just got that cylindrical grinder and wanted to know if you could use these wheels for it. He gave me the sizes, 10 inch outside diameter, three inch inside diameter, I think they're half inch thick or three eighths inch thick, two different grits. I said, no, they won't fit the cylindrical grinder, but they will fit my surface grinder. So this is the exact wheel uh, that fits my surface grinder. It'll take up to a one inch thick wheel, but this three eighths inch wheel will work on there. These are brand spanking new, new old stock, never been used. Uh, grinding wheels, I need to look up these grits on here. So it's an A180 S9 uh, V72 and an A220 09 V72. So uh, I need to look them up and see what these are suitable for as far as what they're made to grind. And uh, I'm going to put them over in my inventory of wheels so that I will have 
these available uh, if I ever have a job for whatever these wheels call for. So anyway, nice to have, always nice to have some extra wheels laying around. And uh, like I said, these will fit very well on my surface grinder. My cylindrical grinder takes a 12 inch wheel. I'm not sure about the inside hub. I haven't taken one off yet to measure it. Um, but I don't. I think it's a larger inside hub than three inches. Uh, but like I said, they'll fit very well over on the surface grinder, and we'll put them to use somewhere along the line. Thank you very much for sending them in, Jonathan. Next item here is another purchase I had for the shop, and uh, this came from uh, Nilts Lima. Nilts has been here before. He's an electrician by trade, and he. Uh, uh, lives up in um, uh, Minnesota, but goes down to uh, Florida quite often during the wintertime and comes right through Tifton. And he's been good about stopping off a couple of times and helping me with the shop. And uh, he actually was here the day that we were unloading my big cylindrical grinder. And he actually helped me do some electrical stuff on it, getting some motors switched over from 440 volts, 220 volts, and just kind of helping me out. But before he came down, he sent me an uh, email and said, hey, I just got this right here. And if you don't know what this is, this is uh, made by Anderson Brothers, and it is a uh, tool for doing balancing. So if you have like a pulley or a wheel or something, it's on a shaft, and you want to check it for balancing. These these uh, wheels up here, they they got really super precision bearings in them. You'll see here and see they're very balanced as well. But you put a shaft across here, you can spin it around. And what you do is you spin whatever you're balancing on this and make sure it doesn't settle out in the same place every time. You can add weights to it. And eventually through some trial and error, you can get something balanced. So I've been looking for a set of these and uh, I never really dreamed I'd find a set this large. This is a big set. These uh, bottoms down here will actually slide in and out so you can move them closer if you're doing something real narrow or wider apart depending on what you're balancing. Uh, but I've actually been on kind of the hunt for a set of these for quite some time and he said, hey, you got any interest in these? I think he told me that this came from the University of Minnesota. They were having a um, surplus sale or something there and either he bought it directly or a friend bought it. He got it at a very reasonable price and basically passed his price along to me. Uh, and I was just ecstatic to be able to pick these things up. They're in excellent shape. They look like they've hardly been used. Uh, and I am just tickled pink to have this because I've actually had a need for these several times, particularly when doing uh, pulleys, uh, trying to get pulleys balanced. I've got a pulley off of my metal planer that's had some repairs done to it where it's been brazed a little bit, and I know that it's not balanced, and I really want to use this to get that, that pulley balanced up. So we'll probably do a video on that at some point in time of me using that, this uh, balancing tool to, to get that in there. So Nils, thanks so much uh, for offering this up to me, and uh, very fair price on them. I was very excited to get it, and this is definitely something uh, that I'm gonna have a use for here in the shop. So another recent, I guess you say purchase, uh, because I did purchase it. This is a DA, D is in dog, A size tool post that fits like on a Laura style tool post. I'm, I'm planning on using this over on my big Monarch lathe. I picked up a while back a DA or a D size tool post and I actually got some holders, but I don't have very many. This is a pretty large size. They're pretty expensive when you can find them. And they're not nearly as common as like the CA and the BA and so forth like that. So uh, this actually came from Brian Block. Uh, I was up at Brian's over the Christmas break doing the job on the steam engine. And uh, ironically, Brian had just bought an, a bunch of EA tool holders, which is even bigger than these, to go with his gigantic Monarch lathe he has. He uh, got them at an auction down here in Georgia, and I went by and picked them up and carried them up there with me when I went. It was a, <laughs> I probably had a load of a couple thousand pounds of tooling when I went up to go see them that I brought up from this auction. And uh, when I was up there, he had picked up a couple of DAs because that's what he thought he was gonna go with until he found the EA stuff. And uh, anyway, I ended up um, buying this from him basically for what he paid for it when he got it. So I'm going to add this to my collection. And, uh, you know, I'm always on the lookout for these uh, DAs like this 
just to be able to, to use over on the, the big metal lathe once we get that up and going. We'll add it on there. It's always nice to just have a bunch of these set up with different cutters in them so you don't have to swap them out every time. So it's good to have a nice selection. So I, if I see these at a reasonable price, I usually just pick them up uh, because I sure as heck don't want to have to buy them new. And again, this one's made by Dorian, which is very high quality. It's not a Loris name brand. But uh, I would say their quality is, is right on par with the Allura stuff made in USA. And with that, I think we have a wrap on this video. Pretty much got worked through another pile of stuff that's come into the shop over the last, uh, I guess it's been about six weeks since I've done an odds and ends. So uh, good to get this stuff where I can get it put up, kind of out of my way, and where I can start using it. And uh, Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are appreciated. And we'll catch you on the next video.